Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm playing on the Glacier map, and I wanted to feature this on the channel because I realized I didn't cover it at all. Glacier is the new map that was released with version 1.0 of the game, and I've, I've been on it about six or seven times so far, and I've actually personally really been enjoying it. I'm not sure if that's the case with all of you, but for me, I feel like I've got opportunities in all types of tanks. If I'm in sort of my light tanks or my medium tanks, I want to try and dominate the center and try and get some spots off. But also, when I'm in my fairly fast Swedish tank destroyer, I nearly said autoloading tank destroyer, it kind of feels like it almost has an autoloader with how quick it reloads that 105mm main armament. But the Swedish tier 10 tank destroyer, the Stritzfang 103B, with its hydropneumatic suspension, just has enough gun depression to really poke around on this ridge line at the beginning. And we see that all of the enemy tanks are, are wanting to set themselves up along this ridge line here. And if they set themselves up along this ridge line here, they're going to be within the, the 445 meters spotting distance for this vehicle. And so I can catch them all out. And if we had artillery on our team, well, then they would be shooting the, the tanks. But obviously, if there was artillery on the enemy team, then using a position like this might be a little bit too cheeky, right? So right now, I'm just happy trading with this Object 268. Nearly said version 4, it feels like this is a rarity in World of Tanks right now, yeah? The, the standard 268, it feels like everybody's playing those 268 version 4s. And you seem to just catch tanks out. Maybe because a lot of people are playing this map probably for the first time and driving around, and I'm sure the meta will shift. But if you can dominate the center of this map, at least right now, it just feels incredibly powerful. Alright, so if you're not really want to try and dominate the center of the map on Glacier. Where should you go in your heavy tanks? Where should you go in your medium tanks? Well, clearly we see that the enemy vehicles are trying to flank around from this location here. And that's because from there, you, you kind of get some cover from artillery. And you can kind of bomb it around over on the top location of the map as well. And when I'm ever, whenever I am in my heavy tanks, I make a very big effort to make sure that I always hug the edge of the map while I'm trying to get into position because that stops players like me who want to try and rush towards the middle and get sneaky shots off on you at the start of the game have a real hard time. One thing I love about this position as well is I'm learning new things about it constantly and that's that you've got this lovely little ridge here that you can fall back. You're not going to get shot by any tanks that situate themselves up there and this is kind of a dream scenario for the Stritzfang 103B. I can hide my lower plate and that's where my thin 40mm of armour are. Of course there are parts of the, the upper hull that are 40mm thick as well, but there are some 50 and 60mm thick plates will that will be ricocheting most of the enemy shells because of course 40mm with a 3 caliber rule is going to get overmatched by the IS-7's 130mm main armament. And also a vehicle like the 430 which has now got 122mm will be able to overmatch the lower plate, but hitting the upper part of this tank they're not going to have so much luck. And also from here I, I seem to be able to spot most of them with my binoculars but they can't see me because of how sneaky this vehicle is and the enemies just aren't bothering to get any vision on me. So I'm basically trying to save this T110 E4 right now and I can do that with one of the highest DPMs in the game. But this T100 LT on the enemy team decides to go forwards and to track me and get a little bit sneaky. But now I've got my frontal armor towards him, he's having a little bit of a hard time. And he can't really stay here, can he? Because if he does, then surely my medium tanks that are located all the way up here would be able to get him. And I'm quite surprised they didn't. And so I just feel really safe here. I feel like this is a very strong position. Although if you're in a very lightly armored tank and a large vehicle, you might still want to be careful. And oh dear, E75 trundles out into the open. And when I'm playing in the most accurate tank in the game, I have no problem going straight for that guy's tracks. Unfortunately, his 120, is it 124 or 128 millimeter? It doesn't really matter because as long as it's 121 millimeters and larger, the E75 is easily able to overmatch the lower plate of the Stritzfang 103B. And I lose 500, and is that 82 hit points to him? Oh, what a high roll there. That's, that's not what you want to be losing. This vehicle starts only with 1,800, so that's pretty much a third of my hit points gone right there to a single shot from a lower tiered heavy tank. Nevertheless, we're, we're still picking up some damage and picking up some spotting in this game, right? 5,800 and 1,500 spotting. But now that I feel I'm on 470 hit points and there's a Skoda T50 there who, who might just load heat and try and go for the lower plate of this tank or alternatively catch me in the side if the T100 LT pushes me, I feel like it's time to get out of there. And of course, Stritzfang 103B, 45 kilometers an hour backwards. I don't even have to, to run away forwards. I don't even have to turn my tank around to run away is what I'm trying to say. 
and that lovely reverse speed allows me to get me out of trouble without exposing the, the thinner, weaker parts of my tank to the opponents, or should I say the less angled, because this vehicle, it's not about the, the tank's thickness with its armor, it's all about that angling on the front of the vehicle as to why this tank does so well. Now, I, I probably could have turned the tank around here, but I felt like maybe I would have a shot at any of the vehicles that were up towards the eastern flank. But in retrospect, you know, is it even worth turning this vehicle around if you can only go five kilometers an hour faster? How long is it going to take you to turn the vehicle? When you think about it, you're, you're only gaining those five kilometers an hour. Probably best to just keep driving in the direction without turning the vehicle fully around and just to focus on keeping the angled part of your armor towards your opponents. So I thought I would set up there to try and catch the T100LT, but he disappeared. But here we go. I'm going to get revenge on him for that aggressive push that he made on us earlier. There we go. One right into the side of his vehicle, leaving him on eight hit points. And the IS-7 finishes him off. But we were ready to assist him if he was unable to hit that shot. And wow, now up to 6,200 damage. This thing just racks it up in just over six minutes of this game as well. Now I spot the 268. Nearly said version 4 again. The one that we were shooting at earlier is not feeling too healthy and he's down to a one shot for this vehicle and I feel a lot more comfortable when he's on a one shot than when he's not because his 750 alpha is going to be taking me out in a single shot. So be very careful on Glacier if you do make your way around this corner because if you go in here that is a one way trip to the garage. We enter siege mode before he comes around the corner preemptively and that allows us to shut down the tier 10 tank destroyer and now we can race into position to hopefully assist the IS-7 with fighting this M103 and if we can get the side of the M103, I'm just thinking juicy, juicy, juicy. But to be honest, I can go through the M103's lower plate. When you're packing 300 millimeters of penetration on your standard rounds, it's not too much of a concern. Now, what you see me do here is I aim at the back of the tank when he's not facing me or when he's not shooting me to try and get maybe a fuel tank or an engine. And then I make sure I turn my vehicle towards him when he's going to fire at me. Now, why is that? That's because the side armor on this vehicle is only 30 millimeters thick. So of course, if I'm aiming at the back of his tank, my side armor will be angled and that might allow him to track me and also overmatch the side of my vehicle, which I truly wouldn't want. The real way that the M103 could got out of that situation is either to fire heat at the lower plate of this vehicle or alternatively, the, the heat shield on top just protects it too much. Or alternatively, try and fire armor-piercing rounds to snipe for the Coppola. Okay, so we're nearly on 10,000 damage combined that we have seen here. Maybe we hit one of our blind shots earlier on on the 268. Nearly said version 4 again. i got to stop this. This is terrible. I'm sorry. I digress. I, if maybe we penetrated him earlier and we'll be on 10k combined, which will be absolutely lovely. But this situation here is is rather tricky. We've got an IS-7 who's kind of chilling at the back a little bit. We've got a T-30 and E-75, and I'm hoping that Sheridan can win his fight against the AMX-1390. And I'm a one-shot for the FV-215B183, the 704, and I'm a two-shot for the AMX-1390 if he does manage to catch me in the side or just hits my cupolas. And oh dear, the 1390 wins the fight against the Sheridan over on the southeastern flank, and so I decide it's time to push. So I ask the IS-7 to push in with me, and I just found out that that boat is destructible. I'm quite lucky. I wasn't quite looking where I was going there. And the 704 gets spotted. All right, well, I feel like, considering the 704 is spotted, I was thinking that maybe he'll try and get into a position here and then turn around to face the IS-7. So maybe I can make my way round the back here and go and fight the 704. And as long as I can track him twice, I should be okay. And I feel very confident with the, the reload on this tank. So I decide to enter the siege mode and slowly approach it so I'm ready to react quickly if he does try to get the jump up on me and manage to catch me. And here we go. We're going to track him once, lock him in place. Does he have a repair kit? He instantly repairs and three, two. Oh, no. Disaster strikes, his 152mm easily able to go through the vast majority of our upper hull armor. If he was to bounce there, he would have had to hit the 60mm just on the front left or the front right of the hull, but he doesn't hit those. And from here on, our team is just going to wilt and have a, a real bad end to the round. And while they do that, I thought, why not give you a good old whiz around about what I feel like the meta is on the Glacier map. Now, I haven't been to the south too much so far, but my feel from it is that it, it it's kind of just a narrow linear pass. And unless you want to maybe slowly grind a heavily armored medium through here, or maybe a faster heavy, it's a little bit tricky. This reminds me of the central part of Lakeville. 
And if you want to take your lights or your mediums up here, sure, you're going to maybe have some good opportunities to get some sneaky shots through. But if you do get caught out, it's just very hard to progress through quickly. The alternative is to use the lower ground here with this kind of smaller town to be able to get through. But I do feel like you're just so exposed here. You'll be exposed from anyone located up in here. Or alternatively, if anyone's still sitting in base there or, uh, or alternatively on the other side, these kind of gaps, yeah, I feel like you're going to get sniped and alternatively of artillery on the map, they're going to get you. And don't forget that you've got all the medium and the light tanks and maybe the faster heavies that are trying to trundle the way across here that will get shots on you as you go through the town. So this map does feel very open and I feel on Glacier, your best for the first part of the game to wait and to see what positions the enemy take up and maybe try and catch a few enemies ill-prepared. If you're in a faster tank, definitely take advantage of hitting this mid-ridge at the start of the battle. You can get some really good spots and shots off along this area where the enemy heavies are trying to sneak through or alternatively if you spawn on the other side, this area. And I would strongly recommend that if you are in a heavy tank, that you try your very best to go slightly longer ways. Use these boats for cover. Make sure you go around this side of the rock. Don't try and take some kind of a shortcut, as otherwise you're most likely to get caught out. And it's the same on the other side as well. Make sure you're going around these boats. But don't go around the big boat, otherwise you're going to end up in the drink. And I personally have yet to see a light tank or a medium tank make strong use of trying to get up here. It just feels like when they get up here, that unless you've got an insane amount of gun depression, that you're just a little bit too exposed, and eventually the enemies do push around to here. And if they do that, then you've just got clean shots up on both sides of the wreck. And so watch out for that. And, and personally, I don't really see the benefit in making the mad dash towards the hill when you can just really dominate from the center. So unfortunately, a defeat here for the tier 10 Swedish tank destroyer on the new Swedish map. But thankfully, as we did pick up a high caliber medal for that 7,724 damage, we still get an ace tanker because of that courageous resistance experience bonus. And as this vehicle has more than enough penetration on its standard shells, we would have made a profit with or without a premium account. And so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are my initial thoughts and tips and tricks for the Glacier map. I hope you enjoyed the video or maybe it was just useful. If it was, please consider giving it a thumbs up, but if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments, have you been enjoying the Glacier map and what kind of sneaky tips and tricks have you got that you would recommend to the community? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.